Hey guys, we're back with Nvidia's latest firepower, and today we've got a head-to-head -head comparison of the RTX 4080 Super cards for you. We're looking at the RTX 4080 Super Tough Gaming OC from Asus and an RTX 4080 Super Aorus Master from Gigabyte. Both cards promise to push boundaries of gaming performance. Let's see how they stack up. First off, the RTX 4000 Super Series marks a significant leap forward, offering substantial improvements in CUDA cores, memory, and core speeds over its predecessors. Unfortunately, the RTX 4080 Super only shows modest improvements in CUDA cores, slight bump in core speeds, and more RT as well as tensor cores. Due to this, 4080 Super is keeping the same 320 watt power envelope as the non-Super card. When it comes down to Asus versus Gigabyte, it's not just about who has more muscle. Looking at them, the Asus Tab Gaming card is a tried and true design. It has a non-nonsense design that says, I'm here to get the job done. The Aorus card from Gigabyte is more like the sports car, sleek and flashy with more RGB lights than a disco ball, and there is even a little screen on the front that's perfect for displaying your favorite memes. Plus, it's so big that it could probably double as your coffee table if you're on a pinch. Enough about looks, let's dive into the performance, but first, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. We'll put these cards through a series of benchmarks, and we've opted to bypass the 1080p resolutions, as results there are inconclusive due to most tests being heavily CPU bottlenecked. This is a good thing, it just shows the sheer power of these cards that we're dealing with here. So, in 1440p benchmarks for the Shadow of a Tomb Raider, the Gigabyte 4080 Super outperforms the Asus card by 2% in average FPS and 3% in 1% lows, showcasing a slight edge in this resolution. When comparing these two with the broader GPU markets, both models significantly outshine the majority, with the Aorus model being around 11% behind the leading RTX 4090 here, but approximately 3% lead over the AMD RX 7900 XTX. At 4K resolution, the performance distinction becomes more evident, with the Aorus 4080 Super maintaining its lead over the Asus Tav Gaming 4080 Super by about 2% in average FPS and 1 percentiles. Compared to the other high-end options, the Gigabyte is about 24% behind the RTX 4090 and is comparable with AMD RX 7900 XDX. In Horizon Zero Dawn, at 1440p, the Asus Tough Gaming 4080 Super edges out the competition with an impressive 203 average FPS, just 1% shy of the top performing RTX 4090. The Gigabyte 4080 Super isn't far off, trailing 3% in average FPS and 8% in 1% lows when compared to the Asus card. Both cards significantly outperform the RX 7900 XTX, with the Asus and Gigabyte leading by 14 and 10% respectively. At 4K, the Aorus slightly overtakes the tough 4080 Super by 1% in average FPS, clocking in at 129 FPS compared to Asus 127. For the 1% lows, the Gigabyte maintains 1% lead. Looking at the broader markets, both cards lag behind the 1490 by about 21%, yet surpass the AMD RX 7900 XTX by approximately 8%, positioning them as a strong option for 4K gaming. In World War Z, at 1440p, the Tough Gaming takes the lead, outperforming the Aorus Master by about 2% in both average FPS and 1% lows. When we look at the rest of the cards, the Tough Gaming and the Aorus Master both perform exceptionally well, with the Tough Gaming trailing the leading for RTX 4090 by about 9%, yet it's ahead of the RX 7900 XTX by a solid 8%. Scaling up to 4K, the competition tightens. The Aorus Master edges out just barely, being fractionally ahead of a tough gaming by less than 1%. In the race for the smoothest performance, they are virtually tied. In the larger context, both are outpaced by the RTX 4090, which leads by a significant 33%, while tough gaming and Aorus Master trail of AMD's RX 7900 XTX by about 6%. In Borderlands 3, at 1440p, the Gigabyte card takes the lead over the Asus card as well as 4090, but that's because they're actually bottlenecked elsewhere. We actually have almost identical results at 1080p. At 4K resolution, both 4080 Super cards showcase almost identical average and 1% low performance. When compared to the top tier RTX 4090, both Gigabyte and Asus cards trail approximately 18%, a gap that highlights the power of Nvidia's flagship. If looking against the AMD's RX 7900 XTX, the Aorus and Asus maintain their competitive edge, leading by roughly 16 and 15% in average FPS respectively. Let's change gears and check out some games with ray tracing enabled, starting with Formula 1 2022 at 1440p. 
the Aorus Master and Tough Gaming are in dead heat. Their performance so closely aligned that the difference is virtually indistinguishable. Less than 1% variation in average FPS means that either card will deliver near identical racing experience. At 4K resolution, the story is much the same. The two cards match each other stride for stride, reinforcing the notion that for high-end gaming, you can't go wrong with either option. While both lag behind RTX 4090 by 27%, they comfortably outpace their RX 7900 XTX, highlighting their superior performance in this game. To get a bit more performance, here is the same game at 4K with the upscaling enabled. The race between Gigabyte and Asus 4080 Supercards remains tight as ever, both clocking in a 180 FPS average, making their performance identical. They stand shoulder to shoulder with a mere 0.2% difference in the 1% lows. Ultimately, they both use the same chip inside, so that makes sense. Compared to the RTX 4090's performance, the 4080 Supers are pretty close. They're only about 25% behind, a testament to the effectiveness of DLSS 3 in bridging the gap at higher resolutions. And even with DLSS 2, the new cars outperform the AMD's best. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p, both cars are delivering the same result but I would say they have good enough performance to enjoy the gameplay. 4K on the other hand is a bit of a lackluster, so we'll jump straight into 1440p with upscaling enabled. With DLSS 3 at 1440p, we see both 4080 Supers flex their muscles. The Auros Master achieves an impressive 196 average FPS with a tough gaming OC right on its tail with 193 FPS. As always, the difference is negligible in their performance. For 4K gaming in Cyberpunk 2077, with DLSS 3 enabled, both 4080 Supers are delivering great performance, each hovering around 118 FPS. The difference between them is minute, both in average FPS and 1% lows. When both of these cards are pitted against their GOAT RTX 4090, they are about 19% behind, a gap they significantly narrowed thanks to DLSS 3 frame generation power. Compared to the AMD's RX 7900 XTX, the Gigabyte and Asus cards both hold a substantial lead, outperforming the AMD model by approximately 22%, highlighting the advantage of Nvidia's upscaling technology in maintaining high frame rates at ultra high resolution. Unfortunately, we were not able to redo the AMD tests with the new fluid motion frames technology, so AMD's results are not full. Let us know if you'd like to see these tests done separately. Let's cover a few quick productivity benchmarks before we do a deep dive on these cards, in particular starting with V-Ray. They both show top tier performance. Their Aorus Master scores a tad higher than the Asus Tough Gaming OC, with a 1% increase in CUDA and 1% increase in RTX scores, which are marginal. When compared to the NVIDIA RTX 4090, the 4080 Super models are approximately 27 and 26% behind in CUDA scores and 26% behind in RTX score. The gap signifies the RTX 4090's dominance in rendering tasks. Yet 4080 Supers hold their ground firmly as high performance options for demanding productivity workflows. Against the previous generation represented by the RTX 3090, both 4080 Supercars demonstrate significant improvements, outperforming it by about 50% in both CUDA and RTX scores. In Blender Custom Render Test, which evaluates rendering performance under CUDA and Optics engines for the NVIDIA cards and HIP engine for the AMD cards, the results demonstrate solid performance for the RTX 4080 Super Series. Both cards perform excellently, with the Aorus Master edging out Asus variant by a slight margin in CUDA performance and even slimmer margin in Optics performance. These differences are minuscule, suggesting the EVA card would be an excellent choice for the Blender render. Against the top of the line RTX 4090, the 4080 Supers are actually about 39% slower in CUDA and only 7% slower in optics. However, when comparing 4080 Supers to the RTX 3090, a former leader, the new RTX 4080 Supers show dramatic improvement, being about 32% faster in CUDA and over 25% faster in optics. Transitioning from the 3D rendering to the video editing, let's see how these GPUs fare in DaVinci Resolve's demanding workloads. As we can see here, they prove their worth in both 4K and 8K media handling, tying in performance. Notably, AMD RX 7900 XT stands out with its exceptional fusion score, indicating its capability in handling DaVinci Resolve's graphic intensive tasks, outperforming even the formidable RTX 4090 in this aspect. Overall, while the RTX 4090 leads in the raw GPU effects, the 4080 Supers offer balanced performance across the board, making them a pretty solid option for video editing machine, providing you're not in need of that extra VRAM. 
Considering the current 4090 pricing and shortages, the new 4080 Supers might become the go-to for the top of the line editing machines. Now let's do a deeper dive under the hood for both these cards and see how it did in the synthetic benchmarks to see which one is actually better. We ran these cards through Time Spy Extreme Loop and tracked metrics using Nvidia PCAT. Based on the graph here, we can see that they have very similar power metrics. We also compared power usage against frame rate and find that both cards head right to the top and actually Gigabyte delivers slightly better performance per watt, becoming our most power efficient card to date, which is a great achievement. To be honest, I was actually expecting 4080 Supers to be at lower power efficiency, but the data speak for itself. When it comes to frequency, we see that Aorus Master holds slightly higher frequency across the board. These are not huge numbers, but considering they use the same chip inside, any improvement is very welcome. And this is why it scored so well in the efficiency score. Next is GPU temperature graph. And here we can see the Aorus Master delivers better results, on average about two degrees cooler than the Asus Tough Gaming card. Personally, I expect it to be warmer considering it's clocking higher, but that's not the case. Digging deeper into the thermal performance, we find the Gigabyte card runs cooler than Asus Tough Gaming OC card by about five degrees on average at the GPU hotspot, which is expected based on a previous graph. When it comes to GPU memory junction temperature, Gigabyte extends this lead to a noteworthy 12 degrees. While memory can run much hotter, the difference here is most likely due to the considerably larger and likely more expensive cooler. To verify this, we've also tested the noise performance of these cards. An Asus card did come out on top with 39.5 dBA over the 40.3 dBA from the Gigabyte, but that's still very minor difference in comparison to the temperature delta. So where does that leave us in terms of price and value? Both these cards are definitely in the premium tier. But considering the performance and features they're packing, they offer solid value for those who are willing to invest in the gaming future. The choice between them really comes down to what you value more. The Asus Tough Gaming card's simple yet effective design, or Aorus card's bigger than life form with a lot more bling and slightly better performance. Both RTX 4080 Super cards are certainly top of the line options and they won't disappoint. I personally would probably pick the cheaper one, but hey, to each their own. What do you guys think? Are you team Asus or team Gigabyte? Let us know in the comments below. As always, we'll leave the links for both cards in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.